Welcome back, everyone. We'll uh, begin with uh, Shani's question, and then I'll proceed. Uh, yeah, I just, I just kind of, I'm still not understanding. I know you said that afterwards you counsel the person to find out what the open door is. Okay, I kind of understand, but while you're trying to cast out, and you're asking like, what, what is the point of asking them questions when they possess, and you're trying to cast out? That's what I'm not really understanding. Okay, so uh, Shani, like when we when we um, talk about deliverance, as I stated earlier, for Jesus it was a one-step experience. That means it was a matter of a few minutes. But when we look at actual deliverances, um, I mean there are there are people that you can we we look at Pablo Gotari's model. Uh, that's an individual who engaged in something like 30,000 deliverances before he wrote out his 10 steps. And similarly, uh, there's a book uh, by uh, Derek Prince, if you've ever read it, uh, and you know, in my name, uh, you sh they shall cast out demons. That's, that's what the book is titled. But when you read all these books from people's experiences, we understand that deliverance sessions may take uh, five minutes, they may even take five days or five months. So that's where this thing about identifying entry point is helpful because you can always use it in the process. And especially if the process is long, let's say it takes two weeks to cast out a demon from a person. In those two weeks, isn't it helpful to identify the entry point? I, I hope that okay. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, it makes it, it makes sense kind of like in a in a um in a long term, like if it's two weeks, yes. whatever. But like a few minutes that I do it didn't just seem like it makes sense for me a couple of minutes, but in the long term, yes. This is more like in the long term then. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, sometimes it can even be months because the willingness of the person is involved. And you know, there are so many other factors. Okay, thank you. I understand. Yeah, sure. Thank you. OK, so a uh, few other thoughts. Be persistent. Persistent is to uh, be committed to the deliverance of that individual. See, the tendency is we want to give up. We've tried. It's taking two days, three days, sometimes a few weeks. And the person is not fully free. We may get discouraged and give up, but don't quit. Be persistent. Keep praying, asking God, God, what can I do differently? What can I do? You know, what is the issue? Help me to understand. So in that way, keep trying. Keep trying as much as possible. The other aspect is that demons are very stubborn. We say that, right? They are very stubborn. They won't. They don't like to let go of their territory. Once they've occupied a house, they've occupied. They don't like it if we ask them to leave. So they will also act very stubborn. You know, they'll, they'll do all kinds of things, uh, distraction. So we also have to be very determined. So deliverance ministry that way, that's why they say it's not easy. We need to determine, like, you do what you want to do, I will do what I have to do. Don't give up. Keep persisting. And don't ever take it as a failure. Right? And the good thing is, see, we can keep learning from every situation, our own experience, experience of other people, and uh, keep praying and saying, Lord, what can I do different to set this person free? And keep trying. Okay? So uh, that don't give up attitude is very important. And whenever possible, Especially in deliverance ministry, it is helpful to work in a team. Now, we know in some situations, we are alone. We go somewhere, we are alone, uh, and we have to cast out a demon. Okay, we still have authority, we can do it. But if it is a planned exercise or a session, as I'm calling it, it is good to have more people from the team. Because we can all exercise collective faith. And we can all 
uh, and uh, it is also said that sometimes it's very exhausting to uh, cast out demons it may take a couple of hours we are praying we are speaking to the individual we are commanding you know all that is going on and what we can do is we can take turns so first maybe i am doing the commanding then i tell another brother can you take over then i am praying right so this way team work is very helpful and when we work in a team we need good understanding uh, so what happens is when we are in a team the tendency is everyone wants to command the demon right but it can confuse the demon like one can say come out in jesus name another person can say i bind you in the name of jesus so the demons like what should i obey everyone is saying their own thing so team will not work like that we need good understanding so when one person is speaking everyone else is either praying or you know they are just um, uh, confessing scriptures so that kind of understanding is needed we we all cannot be in the front right and and doing the commanding so it should be okay so that kind of an understanding in a team will help the process to be faster so get a good team and minister together um and it's helpful like how i told you my friend you know she was telling me no demons are there we have to we have to pray more okay you pray and you command so in a team that again is an advantage holy spirit can reveal one thing to one person another thing to another person and all of us together are ministering so that's how it is and um, always consider post deliverance care okay what is post deliverance care it means see the demon came out and we are happy about it but that is not the end that's actually the beginning when a person is free that is actually the beginning because we have to now guide the person to live free their whole life how can that happen if they are strong in the word right if they are filled with the holy spirit so as pastors ministers we have all that work to do to ensure that the person is plugged into church they uh, they have good personal habits of devotion right uh, they have overcome the temptation the common temptation which they used to have all this is part of post deliverance care so uh, the work is not over we still have work after the demon comes out and we always say that um you know the name beelzebub it uh, people accuse jesus right they said he is casting out demons by beelzebub so what is the meaning of that name beelzebub it means the lord of the flies the lord of the flies and uh, we know that whenever there is leftover food which is rotting you see flies coming and sitting on it isn't it so it's very similar why did people call satan as beelzebub because he is attracted or flies are attracted to garbage and in our lives what is the garbage sin is garbage so if there is sin no matter what kind of rebuking we are doing what kind of commanding we are doing flies will come demons will come you can't set that person free because garbage is still there so post deliverance care sorry it's sounding very <laughs> terrible when we are saying garbage but just for our understanding right that as long as our life is not right with the lord in terms of you know uh, doing the right thing shutting the door to sin we can't help it demons will enter okay so as ministers in post deliverance care ensure that the plate is clean so if plate is clean you don't have to struggle flies will not come okay so that's the way in which we have to work with people so now let's come to the steps we said uh, jesus was one step but actually uh, when when we all engage in deliverance it is a multiple step process and uh, this model it's called the Pablo Botari deliverance model it was formed by a person called Pablo 
Kotari, and he is part of the ministry of um, uh, Carlos Anacondia from Argentina. And what they used to do is they had tents, deliverance tents. If people were demon possessed, they would be brought to the tents, and in those tents, uh, they will exercise authority, cast out demons. So, like this, Pablo Botari has participated personally. Uh, I mean, before coming up with this model, in thirty thousand deliverances. So, I'm sure he knows what he's talking about, right? And he's come up with ten steps that will help any believer cast out demons. So, we are going to look at those steps and uh, uh, apply it in our own experience. So what are some common things that we must understand before getting into the steps? We are ministering to the person and not the demon, right? So we are clear about that. It's not about the demon. It's about the person. We are going to exercise authority. And the faster the deliverance is done, the better. So we don't want to drag it. Then, um, wherever possible, talking to the person or counseling, we will do that because that's going to help us. Then we will also identify entry points or open doors through which the demons are actually uh, coming in and um, affecting the person. And sometimes there may be no manifestation, but still the person could have been set free. So these are you know some basics which we all know. Now let's go into the steps. So the first step is give the individual priority. I will go through all the steps. Uh, you know, okay. Let me read out all the ten steps, and then I will go to the individual steps. So give the individual priority. If a spirit manifests, bring it under submission in the name of Jesus. Establish and maintain communication with the individual. Ask the individual what he or she wants to be free from and try to make sure he or she really wants to get free. Make sure the individual understands to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. Interview the individual to identify root causes and entry points. Lead the individual in closing these doors to the admission of spirits. When all doors are closed, cast out the unclean spirit or spirits. Lead the individual in a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Have the individual ask the Holy Spirit to fill him or her. And um, when done, provide post-ministry suggestions. So let's look at each one. But as we have already um, uh, you know, discussed, these are not, though it is 10 steps, it's not a formula. So it may so happen that when we are ministering, the order goes a little here and there. That's fine. right? But mostly, we can stick to this order. So give the individual priority. It means. Be loving to the person, but be firm to the demon. Okay, be loving to the person, but be firm to the demon. So being loving to the person also means be encouraging of the person. So, you know, we can say something like, uh, I'm going to command now. I'm going to command the demon. Don't get scared. Because sometimes what happens? People get very scared. We are shouting at the demon, but it they, they go through a very traumatic experience because it's almost like we are shouting at them. right? But all this can be clarified. In the beginning itself, we can tell them, look, uh, we understand you are being tormented by demons, so we are going to minister. right? So there will be times when we are commanding the demon, don't get scared. Don't get scared. We are not shouting at you. So clarity, person versus the demon. So be loving and kind to the person and uh, be firm with the demon. Now, it is also possible that the person gets very discouraged because 
you see somebody who is demon possessed it's possible that they were taken to many pastors they were taken to many ministers of god and the demon didn't come out so when they have come to us again they are like oh for so many years i'm suffering again these people are going to do this they'll call they'll rebuke they'll command so for the person it can be quite hard it can be quite difficult they're already suffering because of the demon for so many years and now again put put them through a process of deliverance so think about it you know so we need to be kind to the person but be angry with the demon then if a spirit manifests right so i i shared with us they behave like this or some movement or they start to shout or they start to speak loudly we can exercise authority to bring the demon under submission so we can say like how jesus said keep quiet i command you to keep quiet or i remember once one sister uh, she was demon possessed we had gone for some mission trip and in that mission trip we were casting out as a team actually like all of us were casting out even pastor was also there but it was taking a long time this particular sister but in her situation the demon was very violent so violent like it was throwing her body here and there we were literally catching her about two to three of us we were holding her tight otherwise if we don't hold her tight she'll go fall here fall there in fact she hit her hand to the uh, to the wall and injured her uh, her fingers quite badly you know so uh, the demons are like that they can behave weird and uh, so as a minister if they are harming the person we take authority we say in jesus name i command you not to do this right and if we are working as a team make sure that the the demon is not harming the person because demons do that they'll try to injure they'll try to you know make them fall something they'll do so that the person gets badly hurt uh, and, and so we can just hold them and we can even tell them look we are not trying to uh, you know restrict you but we are just trying to protect you that's why we are holding on if they have the understanding right so in this way take authority and ask the demons to submit keep quiet or don't move or don't hurt this person we can say things like that then if possible establish communication start to speak to the person and tell them uh, what exactly we are doing now if that person is able to communicate with us it will be helpful right now if they are not don't worry about it there are times when you know we are commanding to that person and we say something like look at me look at me right i'm talking to you are you able to hear me so it happens like you know when when we do like that um the the person may respond to us they may say yes you know i'm listening to you i'm listening to you are you okay are you doing fine the person may say yeah i'm i'm doing good it's fine you know so it's two separate things talking to the demons and talking to the person so these are things we can do and it may actually encourage the person as you are doing the session so communicate with them and uh, maybe you can even say you know it's just going to take some more little more time be strong uh, we'll be done with this something like that so you just speak to them then uh, also ask the person whether they want to be free remember we talked so much about the will of the person so they should be willing to get free if they're not willing to get free let's say you know we're talking to them and then they say uh, okay do you want to be free of this de- of these demons and the person says no i don't want to be free right so again you ask them are you sure you don't want to be free if they say uh no i don't want to be free right whatever you're saying i don't believe in it i don't want to be free you have to close the session right then because there's no point there's no point carrying forward so at that point we are going to st- we are going to stop we'll say okay fine no problem you know take care we'll be praying for you hope you are uh, you know th- these problems you come out of these problems just let them go i know it's very difficult but you see the will of a person is always the limitation if they are not willing nobody can do anything right 
so that's how it works so uh, the step 4 if they don't want just stop if they are willing continue if you feel like they need you know some discussion and clarifying then talk to them some more and ask them so i remember this one incident where uh, uh, we again on one of the mission trips and a girl started manifesting i may have shared these stories i think i don't know uh, if if i have then apologies i'm just repeating myself so there's this one girl she was manifesting the demon spirits and we were trying to cast out so there was a few of us uh, and you know we were all part of the youth so we went whatever we've learned in sunday sermons and you know read pastors books we thought we'll apply everything so one is commanding in jesus name you come out another is saying i bind you i lose you everything we know we are trying to get the demon out but the demon was not coming so then what to do now um so we called uh, we actually called pastor <laughs> we were like we tried so much but it's not happening like pastor what what should we do then um he prayed and he just said uh let's let's see if there is some dedication right so we called her mother her mother was close by we called her mother and um, we started asking you know it's like the step 4 because demon is not coming out we already started casting it out but it's not coming out so when we inquired with the mother she told us that i have actually dedicated my daughter to the goddess of beauty so when she was born we have made that dedication and uh, so then we understood there is a dedication over her life so even if we command unless the dedication is broken the demon will not come out right did you all understand so when we found that out we had to talk to the mother and we had to talk to the daughter also and uh, we had to explain to them that we have to break the dedication are you okay right now that the mother was a believer i think the daughter too but they still had this dedication with the demon so we pray we explained to them then we prayed with them we said okay repeat after me right um i i am a child of god i belong to jesus my my body belong my spirit soul and body belongs to jesus i'm redeemed by the blood of jesus i'm no longer committed to these gods and goddesses so we had to take them through all that i renounce it uh, i i break it all kinds of you know uh, uh, prayers after which when we commanded the demon it just came out the girl was free like that once we prayed to break the dedication so see the step 4 is where we are trying to understand all these things like what exactly is going on why is this person in bondage how did they get into bondage right and when we find that out we are then able to deal with that specific bondage and address it so if the person is not a believer step 5 step 5 what is it this is about accepting jesus as your personal savior so we would say why why should we do this why should we do this if they are not a believer during deliverance <laughs> so that unity okay yeah okay okay so unity agreement of another person who's in christ fine uh so one of the main reasons is when we are in christ we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light automatically we are free so that is why salvation bringing somebody into salvation is so very helpful because immediately all the bondages are broken immediately all the you know many things are broken and uh, when the person is redeemed they come under the kingship and lordship of jesus then demons can't stay so that's another reason so we can pray for them and we can say you know uh, would you like to 
received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, pray with me, uh, repent of your sins, and then lead them in the salvation prayer. And also another reason is that once they are free, once they are a believer, remember in Matthew 12, it says demons are going to come back. At that time, the house has to be clean. What is the meaning of that? The person should be saved. The person should be, uh, you know, walking with the Lord. Only then the demons will not re-enter. So for that sake, lead them into salvation. And point six here is to shut entry points. Entry points. So entry points means um, <coughs> we take them through. You know, like we try to understand if the demons, if we are clear that there is an issue out of because of which the demons have entered, like we said, sin, right? Sin is one thing. Now, even if the person has been through a traumatic experience, okay, uh, it is noted that difficult experiences in life sometimes, right? Our will power is little low at that in those moments, we are weak in our will. So demons can even enter through traumatic experiences. Right? That's why emotionally people are still hurting. Many things are not yet healed because the trauma of what they went through, it can even carry a demonic influence. I'm saying it can. I'm not saying it always does. Uh, it may carry. So when we find out all these things, we may have to lead them as point seven says, lead them in a prayer. And what does this prayer say? This prayer will help them shut the doors. So how to shut the doors? What are the prayers that will shut the doors? So our, um, uh, till now, what we know is this person wants to be free. They have told us they want to be free. So we can work with them. The prayers are something like, first is forgive. You see, when we carry unforgiveness in our hearts towards others, demon spirits can influence. Got it? So living our lives with forgiveness in our hearts is very important. Very important for believers. Now, believers may say, you know what, I'm just upset with that person because of uh, what they did. I mean, it's understandable, but in the long run, keeping unforgiveness and letting unforgiveness grow in our hearts is very dangerous, even from the spiritual side, because it can be an entry point for demons. So in prayer, we can lead them to pray to release forgiveness. Something like, okay, let's agree together. If there are people against whom you are holding grudges, Right now, agree with me and say, God, I forgive so and so. I forgive so and so. You know, I set them free. I don't hold anything against them. I forgive them. I bless them in the name of Jesus. It's a very powerful step to forgive people. And uh, it's helpful even in deliverance. Forgive people. Second is repentance. So uh, we may, Holy Spirit may remind us that there is a, particular situation or particular sin because of which the demon has entered. So then we have to pray and ask God for forgiveness. Okay. So for example, if the Holy Spirit is reminding us that the demon has entered because of, you know, some form of uh, uh, worship of false gods, then we have to pray with that person and say, uh, Heavenly Father, I'm so sorry for engaging in worship of false gods. Uh, I, I repent of my sin of worshipping. Be specific about what exactly happened. And when we do that, things will be broken. You know, sometimes when people engage in the occult, you know, things like people, um, people do some rituals, or they call spirits. Sometimes in school, students do all these things. I remember in my school days also, my friends used to say, hey, you can actually do this. The spirits will come and give the answer. But all those things are against God. 
and even in those simple silly moments demons can come right so holy spirit may remind us you did this that's when the demon came so repent and say god i did that i'm so sorry i repent of that action or horoscope sometimes we read horoscopes right all these things are not biblical or we we do like palm reading or we do like some tarot card reading or you know people have a bird come and pick the card these all these things uh, are not godly and it can actually open the door to demonic spirits in our lives so when we are casting out demons holy spirit may remind us you remember this happened that happened you said this you did this that is when these demons have come so we have to say god we repent i repent be specific of doing this activity i repent of committing this sin so when we say that it gets broken got it so that is why we have to do it be specific open the mouth and admit and say god i'm sorry so then the power of demons over our life will be broken then renounce 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 means uh, you see now we have prayed to god we have repented so that's fine but renounce means speaking loudly so that the demon spirits can also understand see here is another thing demons cannot read our minds they can't so what am i thinking they can't know but they can know my behavior and they can predict you know what i might do or what i might say okay but they cannot read the mind demons have to be instructed or commanded we have to speak to them so unless we speak to them they will you know they they'll uh, not know like come out i have to say come out for the demon to come out so in the same way renunciation renunciation means i speak loudly and firmly and i i say things about myself i i will say things like um you know i renounce these spirits that are influencing me because now i am a child of god you know i renounce this sin in my life i renounce this spiritual practice so when i'm doing like that see god already knows because i have repented but even the demonic world needs to know i need to tell them that you are no longer in charge that is the meaning of renounce so i'm going to renounce i'm going to reject the works of uh, the demons in my life and for this we have to speak loudly i can't say in my head i have to say things like you know uh, i belong to christ uh, i am a redeemed child of god i no longer come under your slavery devil you know so i have to speak all these things for satan and the demons to be clear about my stand right now okay so that is the meaning of renounce speak loudly uh, you can see that uh, there is a lot written under this section of renounce so you can actually read that out and if there is any dedication made then we have to say loudly i break this dedication which was made by my you know sometimes grandparents dedicate us or parents dedicate us right some spiritual uncle somebody dedicates us these things put us in bondage so when we are renouncing we have to say i am breaking the dedication i am breaking the vow made by so and so and i no longer come under its authority so that is renouncing and of course the person who is ministering okay the pastor or the believer you also go ahead and break those bondages break those dedication so we will pray a prayer like every stronghold you know which which has allowed these demons to come into this person we destroy in the name of jesus so even as a minister of god we have to pray those prayers right so once all this is done our understanding is that now all the doors are closed then what to do next command now that the doors are closed we say something like there is no legal right now satan does not have legal right why because the person has become a believer 
all the entry points are closed they have repented we have broken any bondage dedication so there is no legal right for the demons to stay so now if we go ahead and command them to come out they will come out easily easily the spirits will come out and you know the person will be set free so then once they come out what to do <coughs> two things we can ask the person to engage in praise and thanksgiving so worship so we can tell them you know come worship with me let's worship the lord we can all worship for some time and later we can also uh, pray for the holy spirit to be filled in that person so you remember i told you one lady who was you know uh, very violently being thrown and all that so when the spirit came out of her a few of us we asked her are you baptized in the holy spirit she was a believer but still she had a demon she was demonized so we asked her are you baptized in the holy spirit she said no i don't know what that is so then we explained to her i mean just minutes ago demons have come out of her right so we prayed with her and we thank the lord and we said um, uh, okay so can we pray for the baptism in the holy spirit so when we pray this this might happen you may start speaking a new language are you are you okay can we do that she said yes and like i can't forget it we prayed for her she started praying in tongues minutes just minutes after right so uh, the the point is as matthew 12 says when the demons go out they will try to come back but before they come back it's our duty to make sure the person is safe that is why are they born again are they filled with the holy spirit and then comes the post ministry suggestion so post ministry suggestion is we will spend time with the person often and uh, you know tell them maybe if their their issue was unforgiveness we'll help them to never get into that again so you know counsel them teach them from god's word uh, and uh, help help them manage those situations according to god's word then uh, maybe have accountability you know what is accountability accountability is when uh, somebody is sort of journeying with us okay for example a leader let's just assume you, you are working with a young person okay if you are working with a young person and the demon has come out now that person has become a believer right what is the logical thing to do will you just say bye okay bye see you next year what what would we do logically what will we do now this person is free now what to do what would you do you are the pastor what will you do you have to tell them uh, sister about lord jesus to accept the uh, lord jesus as a savior they are a believer sister they are already accepted they are a believer okay i, I think uh, akil is saying something yeah yes akil you will continue to help them grow in the christian walk right. you know in the scriptures and they yeah. will be more participative correct correct regular yeah. touch it's not it's the beginning I sure so journey with them isn't that what we will do we will journey with them at least to the extent that is possible we can tell them come and meet me once a week why you want to check on them is that why yeah that is accountability when we are asking them every week when they meet us okay how is how is it going what are some of the problems difficulties that you are having so as they share you can establish that accountability uh you know are they still struggling in that area then you can guide them some more just make sure the person becomes stronger maybe one month we meet them then after that we say okay come once in a month i just want to know how you are doing keep in touch with them if possible for one year so at the end of that one year at least you know they are strong now so if they choose to go somewhere else something okay no problem they know how to deal with that issue right so that is accountability to keep in touch with them to ensure that they remain 
strong to ensure that the old patterns are broken right so why are we doing this for the person because the bible says there is a possibility for them to be under attack again and uh, we want to make sure that you know that um, they don't come under it or they don't succumb to it fine so um one more practical question yes. you know in a church that's very large and huh? a lot of people come for deliverance healing prayer and thing Hmm. so as pastors people reach out they pray and they do their best in the ministry yeah. it is not the busyness of the pastor that is the problem hmm. it's like you know people do get carried away it's like once they get a healing and receiving like what you say the, the demons can always come back hmm. so whose ownership and accountability is there you can't put the thing on the pastor this because pastor can't keep reaching out to you know, thousands of people in a large gathering yeah so, so see it works both ways akil so from the side of the pastor we can be strategic so what we can do is if we have teams of people uh and we are sure that we are not able to spend much time with the individual put them on to somebody else like a leader maybe a life group leader or you know ministry leader then at least somebody is in touch and we can be in touch with that person and say how's it going so we need a strategy to minister to all people even if we have thousands of people right some mechanism that is one now from the side of the person uh yeah if they are not you know they are not responding well uh after some time we say you know we can't blame ourselves because we tried we told them exactly they have to take responsibility yeah if they are not taking then you can't do everything right so that's really sad but yeah yeah so i guess um uh, in this section that's what we had and finally there's one portion about addictive behavior so addictive behavior um you see a person can come under oppression of uh, demons can also be demonized but then there are other sides to dealing with addiction as well you know only casting out the demons may not be the final solution we may have to um engage the person in 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 consistent counseling you know re rehabilitation and also when they've been through that season of addiction maybe uh, you know there are other aspects like um their health needs to improve more or you know mentally if they are going through some uh, some issues right so they may require rehabilitation in that case or uh, let's say uh, some kind of uh, training to to help them regain the rhythm of life skills in life so there there's a lot more that needs to be done so just casting out the demon may not be everything so you know we we usually use the term like rehabilitate them back into a uh, usual life and you know rhythm so additional work may be required in the case of addictions um okay so i think with this i will wrap up if there are questions we can address there are two more uh, section two more chapters which i will probably do a recording of i'll just put the recording and you can all view it uh, and that should be fine so um yeah so with this with today's class we come to the end of uh, you know the the sessions from here uh and we'll take up questions uh yes shani i can see your hand raised yeah i have a question two questions i have a question about you said that when you're trying to um minister as a team can you clarify that you were saying that um one person saying cast out another person shouldn't say loose cuz it makes it weak can you explain that um and then the other question i have is about trauma can lead to demons coming into person unforgiveness like if somebody 
witness witness their uh, relative being killed that's trauma how does that lead to demons coming to person and how does it manifest is it anger or whatever and and same thing for unfor same thing for unforgiveness so that's why those are my questions okay yes uh thank you shani um so your second question i will answer first so you're saying trauma if someone's been through any trauma um I mean, I, I don't know all the details to explain what exactly happens. But, you know, one aspect is that when we are very scared or ve very um, uh, like that, that particular incident, for example, let's say an accident and being in that accident, we, we may be in a place where our will is weak for just a few moments. Right. Or we may think a thought that says, uh, why is this happening or why me has God forgotten me? Some some things like that. And whenever we do things like that, those can actually act as open doors because our faith is shaken for a minute. Right. And demons are looking for that. Even a few seconds when our faith is shaken, they are happy to, to kind of begin their influence. So. That's what exactly happens in trauma. So it can be any traumatic experience, maybe a little child in a difficult home, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, constant uh, violence in the home. It's traumatic. They can take in demons because of that. Or as you said, uh, someone is seeing their loved one uh, going through sickness. And if they are in moments where they are lacking faith, then again, it's like, opening up doors for uh, demonic influence. So all these things do happen. But if we recognize it, we must kind of, you know, we must take authority immediately and uh, overcome it. And uh, the initial first question you asked is, as a group, when we are ministering, uh, we, we can discuss among ourselves and plan out who will do the instructing part. And, you know, uh, be, let the authority flow like that clearly. Then it's a lot easier to get the demon out. I hope I've addressed your question, Shani. Yeah, I can understand because I know the first one, I know you're saying people get tired and stuff. So kind of um say, I guess, have one person stick with the instruction, the rest like praying. Okay, I think I, I understand that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, okay. um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So let one person stick to the instruction does not mean it's one person throughout the session. Like if it's five hours, then maybe one person can do the commanding for the first hour, another person for the second hour, so on and so forth. You're just oh, sharing. Okay. Just don't change it up. Just kind of stick with the same kind of script. Oh, okay, I see. Don't kind of change it up. And in terms of going back to trauma and unforgiveness, like these demons getting people, how do they manifest like in terms of anger? That's what I'm trying to like how do they manifest in them in terms of when they have trauma, like abuse or unforgiveness? You said that could be entry point. So does that mean they manifest in terms of as his anger? I mean, that's that was one of the things I quite really wanted yeah, to find so out. Yeah, so they can, they, you see, it depends on the demons that have gone in. So the manifestation will be in line with the demons that have entered. So in a trauma situation, any demon could have gone in. And if it is a spirit of anger, then they will it will manifest as you know, like an angry uh, comment or, uh, yeah, some violent behavior. So by that, you can understand. Oh, so that's the same thing with unforgiveness, too. It can be anything. Unforgiveness? Unforgiveness, demons, that could be, it can manifest as anything, too, in terms of you said that demons can come, entry points as un unforgiveness. That can be, they can manifest any way, just like with trauma. Yes. So, uh, see, unforgiveness can make us susceptible to demonic influence and it can be any demon that can take over from that point oh okay 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 i understand that i just i just have one more question then if we don't if we're casting out demons somebody we don't know we should kind of like exchange numbers or follow up with them to kind of minister of like we, we don't know the person because that's kind of way from what you're saying kind of follow up what if we don't we just met yeah. them, we cast out a demon. Should we change numbers and try to follow up with them, even though they're like a perfect stranger? Yeah. So if if somebody is a perfect stranger, we can put them on to another minister of God who can keep in touch with them. For example, we go to another city and we minister. 
um, and what we can do is we can tell the pastor to take care from there and then you know we just come back so if if you we don't have the opportunity to follow up just connect them to someone who can follow up okay thank you thank you yes okay, thank you and uh, yeah i i will still meet you online in the last uh, recording but uh, thank you so much for being a part of this course and really trusting god that it will be helpful in our lives in a very practical way and uh, uh, never forget that we have the authority to overcome demonic powers so let's close off with a word of prayer i just want to request somebody from class to pray let's pray precious loving heavenly father we thank you o lord as children we come to your throne of grace especially with a heart filled with gratitude for a lot of insights that we have learned in this course we thank you for the dedication and the teaching and the effort and the interest that pastor nancy has put in we pray o lord that we will not only be hearers of your word but also doers of your word to exercise authority in every sphere of our life and in every challenges that we face with people we know and the people that we don't know that you will enable us to be victorious by the finished work of the cross and your word and the name of jesus we pray that you will help us to be equipped in the times to come and we will glorify your name in everything that we do in jesus mighty matchless name we pray amen amen thank you thank you akhil thank you everyone god bless you have a wonderful week ahead